welcome to this week's Two Minute Parsha. Yosef has been in jail for two years in Egypt since the release of the butler at the end of last week's Parsha, Parsha of the Yeshev. In this week's Parsha, Parsha's Miketu, we begin with Parah's two dreams. First, he dreams of seven fat cows eating, being eaten by the seven ultra thin cows, and second, he dreams of seven thin ears of grain devouring seven healthy ears of grain. Parah feels the need to have these dreams interpreted, but none of the wise men in Egypt can give him a satisfactory explanation until finally the butler remembers Yosef and he tells Parah of him and of his ability to interpret dreams accurately. So they pull Yosef out of jail and he's brought to the pirate to interpret the dreams. Yosef interprets the dreams and he says that there are going to be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of hunger and he advises them to save the produce of the first seven years to um, supply for the, the pursuing seven years of famine. Parah is delighted by this interpretation and he appoints Yosef as emperor over all of Egypt. Yosef is renamed Sofnas Paneach and he immediately goes about implementing his plans. He then marries Osnas, the daughter of Potiphera, and she bears for him Ephraim and Manasseh. When hunger strikes, only Egypt has enough food in the region, so Yaakov, who hears about this from Israel, sends his ten oldest sons down to buy food from Egypt. Yosef recognizes them when they arrive in Egypt and he summons them. He doesn't reveal his identity and he accuses them of coming to spy on the land. They deny it, but Yosef still throws them into jail for three days, and when, he, and when he releases them, he tells them that they must come back with their youngest brother if they want to prove their innocence. And he keeps Shimon also as a token that they should come back. He then sends them home with the food that they came to buy, and he also stuffs into their bag the money that they had come with. When they arrive back home, they realize that the money was in the bag, and they are fearful of the consequences. They tell Yaakov of everything that has happened to them, and that the ruler wants, um, wants them to return with, um, with Binyamin. It takes a lot of convincing, and only when the famine was really great, the food was really low, and Yehuda has taken full responsibility for the safe return of Binyamin, does Yaakov finally agree to let his youngest son go with him. Again, when they arrive in Egypt, and Yosef has seen that they brought Binyamin, he summons them to his home, where he feeds their donkey, he gives them water to wash their feet, and he sits them down, in order of age, for a meal. They give Yosef a gift from home, showing their utmost respect, and still not knowing who he really was. Yosef then blesses Binyamin, and he makes a quick exit to relieve his emotions after seeing his younger brother. He then sends them on the way again, with their bags filled with as much food as they can carry, and with the money that they had brought. He also hides in the back of Binyamin the silver goblet. Soon after they leave, Yosef sends his men after them to retrieve the goblet. They return to Yosef's palace and deny having taken the goblet. So Yosef's men proceed to search the bag, and sure enough, they find the goblet in the bag of Binyamin. Yosef says, oh, I gotta keep Binyamin as a servant. But Yehuda steps in, and he speaks on behalf of the brother, saying, if you want him, you have to take all of us. This dialogue is continued next week. In summary, this week's Parsha, we had Paris dreams leading to Yosef's appointment as emperor over Egypt. We then have the birth of Ephraim and Menashe and Yosef's brother coming to buy food from Egypt. And Yosef gives them three tests. First, he accuses them of spying and he imprisons them. Second, he asks them to bring down Binyamin. And third, when they leave in the second time, he accuses Binyamin of stealing his goblet. Good Shabbos and Alich de